Hi, I'm Andrew with Baker's Gas. We're here today with the Miller Mac 211 and a Multimatic 215. So we're going to do a comparison video on the two, um, kind of go over the differences and why or why not you would choose one over the other. Um, so to jump right off into the thing, the, the Miller Mac 211 is just a MIG welder um, and you can put it in a spool gun attachment so you can weld aluminum. The 215, the Multimatic 215 does three. So we can do MIG, stick, and TIG off this unit. So right there is the main dividing difference. But if you look at them, they're very similar in the same package, right? Same length, height, width. But what the difference here is on the screen. So the 215, we got an LCD display. Um, the 211, we do not. But they do come with the same MIG gun, um, same ground clamps, and it, it's a lot of the same things, same consumables for the MIG guns. But in the Multimatic, you get a stinger for stick welding, and you can also buy the TIG kit for this unit and get a foot pedal as well. And then that, that's the, uh, an optional add-on for that. And you can see they both have auto set. Um, we just got, we'll turn, oh, turn that back on. And then we, we have auto set on this unit, auto set on this unit, just a little bit different display when in auto set. Um, and then on this side, we, we're telling us we got our flux core MIG stainless, MIG 7525, MIG 100% CO2. Now this is where it starts to differ. This one got has a spool gun. We can also put a spool mate 100 or 150 on this unit. Same as the 211. But here's the dividing line. We got TIG lift arc with a remote, and then we got TIG lift arc, no remote, and then stick. So you get three more functionalities, but if you were to buy machines to do just solely those, you would have a lot more money in three machines than you would just buying the one machine to accomplish all three. I guess where I would divide the line and say, are you ever gonna stick or TIG weld? If you say no, I'd buy the 211. If there's ever a chance that you're gonna stick or TIG weld, I would go with the Multimatic 215. Because a lot of people, I get a lot of questions about, well, I might wanna try it one day. Well, if you wanna try it, What's the chances of likelihood of trying it? Because this is obviously going to be more money up front, but you're going to have all that functionality on the unit. Now, if we spin around, same, same inside components as far as uh, what we, you know, where the spool goes, the drive system. But one thing I did notice, and it is just the uh, this sticker. And this sticker are different, but it's different because we have three more fun, right? We have TIG with remote, TIG without remote, and stick. So it gives us a little bit more uh, information on how to change our leads to do that. This unit, as far as changing the leads, we actually have output studs on this unit that we can connect and disconnect, whereas the 211 does not. We have a hard link to the ground inside of the machine off the power block. This unit, we can flip-flop, comes with an, exter or an external ground cable that we gotta plug into right there. So, a little bit different, a little bit better in my eyes, system with ground and lugs and that sort of thing. But, the 211 is just a MIG welder. So, really, we don't have to flip-flop leads when we're going from TIG to MIG, right? So, that's the only reason why they put the studs on the outside is when you're flipping the TIG because you're going to run electronegative, whereas MIG you're going to run electropositive. So it's a uh, it's pretty pretty nice unit, very easy to use. Now, like I said, where, where I would decide on that is if you're ever going to have a chance of using TIG, then I would buy the Multimac 215. Both of them are going to have the same output ratings, a um, little bit higher duty cycle. Um, on 220 as always. 110, they both do 110 or 220. And then you got like a 20% on 110, 40% on 220 output. The TIG output on this, I've TIG welded with the unit. It welds very nice. It's just limited on the amperage. But if I can bet, you're probably not gonna be running 200 amps on your TIG torch. Probably most people are gonna run between 90 and 120 amps. So it, it's perfect in that wheelhouse right there. All right, so then the main visual difference, I just flip back down around to the front of the machine here. So we both got it on MIG Steel C25, which is 7525 mix. Got mine on MIG Steel, which is just a picture 
and wording. This one has a LED light that lights up and then we hop in there. Now, I got mine set to auto set. We know it's an auto set, the blue light's on. We're in auto set, we're on auto 35. Now this one is, so I can turn it on, or that was off, this is on. So when you turn it on, right, you see the difference. I just got the Miller logo, voltage, wire feed speed. Turn it on, now I can change my wire size, right? So we're gonna go to 035. My material thickness, we got it set up for eighth inch on this one, 035, we got eighth inch 035. So that's my target setting. You can see a little target, if I adjust off there, it moves the target, comes back, moves to the target. So they're giving you a visual representation of, hey, it's about 17.7 volts, 202 on the wire feed speed to weld eighth inch material. Now this one, we don't know that. It doesn't give us voltage or wire feed speed readout. So that's that's the difference between the two, but the auto set is the same function. So they should weld exactly the same if I'm on auto set on 215 or auto set on 211. It's gonna have the same output. We just don't have a visual representation of where we're at as far as voltage and wire feed speed. So that's what differs on the 215. That's a, that's a nice feature. It's wrapped in there pretty tight. It's very clear, you can see it. Whereas this one, more of a, you know, you, the operator feels like they're guessing now, like where was I at actually? Because when you turn it on over here, these knobs become basically useless. You're not adjusting them. It's telling I'm on eighth inch and I'm on over 35 and it's gonna have the correct output. Or this one, there's a little bit of minute adjustment I could bump up or down. So that's a very nice feature on the 215 and if you're not, let's just see here real quick. If you're not familiar with TIG welding and you want a TIG weld on the 215, it's gonna tell us the cable that we're Well, this machine is smart enough to recognize that, hey, okay, I got my power block to the correct one, but I gotta get my TIG torch out. And it's gonna tell me, okay, now you gotta put your TIG torch in. So in that visual representation, let's just go back to that screen real quick we'll pop up here and we're gonna come down so they're gonna give us they're gonna tell us hey which lead goes where so it's giving us a representation though our, we gotta have our negative side on our TIG torch positive side on that so it's it, it's very nice that it's telling us this whereas the 211 you can't even take well with it but there is no visual uh, guidance on things like that so that's what's kind of setting those two machines apart and the multimatic 215 is a is very popular and I, a lot of home hobby guys buy this unit too because they want to do a little bit of TIG welding and they gotta you know that you gotta have the multimatic to do that whereas the 211 would be just straight for people who do straight MIG welding you know we're not gonna ever take we're not ever gonna stick that's the perfect unit but all in all they're both very nice very popular very reliable uh, don't see too many of them come back from service or for service. Uh, they they just they stay they, just, they stand tall against competition too as far as output and features. But both are very nice. So if you got any questions, comments, concerns, leave them down below. We'll do our best to answer them. Uh, thanks again for watching and stay tuned for some more.